Hello, I'm Dana Bergdoff, Fort Worth Assistant City Manager, and I'm honored to join the Tarrant County League of Women Voters in celebrating the centennial of the 19th Constitutional Amendment, which enfranchised some 20 million American women. We are especially grateful to our video sponsors, Ardent Spirit Consulting and the Rick Ward Law Firm. To honor the women in politics today, the League awarded the Democracy Star to six Tarrant County elected officials who are women and were selected by their respective parties for recognition. Our thanks go out to Republican Party Chair Rick Barnes. We invited the awardees to share highlights of their political experiences with our interviewer, Karen Nicholson, a Texan and long serving officer of the League of Women Voters in the United States. On this video, you will meet Kay Granger, one of our democracy stars. A former teacher and business owner, Kay's public career began as a member of the Fort Worth Zoning Commission, followed by election as the first female mayor of Fort Worth. She has experienced a trailblazing career and has been recognized for her achievements with election to the Texas Women's Hall of Fame and the Fort Worth Business Hall of Fame, among many other honors. I am pleased to present Karen Nicholson interviewing Kay Granger. Welcome Congresswoman Kay Granger. Uh, congratulations on the Democracy Star Award. We thank you very much for agreeing to talk with us as a female elected official and let's get straight to the question so you can tell us what that experience is, is about. Uh, why did you run for the first elected office that you ran for? What inspired you? Uh, what, what inspired me, I lived in Fort Worth all my life, raised my children, went to school here in Fort Worth and it wasn't a very good time for Fort Worth because with defense downsizing, Lockheed Martin lost the biggest contract they'd ever had, had to lay off 8,000 people, Bell helicopter, the same thing. And it looked like we might have our base closed, which turned out to happen. And since I'd lived here so long, served on the city council and some other places, I said, I'm going to try to bring us out of this and, and work for this. And that was really my, my goal. We did it really well because we were one of the all American city with the, the highest crime decrease in the nation. When your economy goes down, your crime goes up. And so we did, took, did that and approached it in a very different way. It was very successful. What was the hardest part about running and what was the part you enjoyed the most? I'll start with what I enjoyed the most is visiting all the neighborhoods in, in my district and uh, meeting people, hearing their experiences. That was wonderful. The hardest thing was asking for money because uh, that's just, it, that's just something that's hard to do. Uh, I do it really well now, but at that time I never had, and I didn't know whether to ask for $10 or, or a thousand, but people kind of knew that that was, uh, that was one of the things that was new to me. And I learned a lot. Uh, what advice would you give in 2020 to women who are running for office? I would tell them, I think important now um, is that they run not as the first woman, not necessarily as a woman or a minority, but just say, this is what I think the nation needs or my city needs. Uh, and this has been my experience and this is my plan to, to improve that. Uh, I think there are enough women in, in office now, not enough, but enough for people to not have to say, I'm going to vote for her just because she's a woman, but all that the, the women bring um, to elected office. Do you think women or people of cover, color have to do anything differently than men do? Not as much as they did when I first ran. When I first ran, I ran for mayor and I was the first woman mayor they'd ever had. And I always think about that. One of the first things I did, they said, we want you to know what the city does and meals on wheels. They asked me to go and, and I did and uh, to deliver meals and walked in a man who's 90 years old and they introduced me to this is Kay Granger, the mayor. And his response was, well, what are we going to do with her? <laughs> and, and, and everyone started to laugh. But I think he may have thought, 
what are we going to do with her? Because she's serving the meal. I hope that's true. But it gave everybody a laugh. And, and it's, <laughs> I always think about that. So do you feel that you get a, a much better or different reception now that you have so much experience in an elected office? Absolutely. Uh, I won one time when I was in early stages when I had just been elected, I had a very uh, important business person who came to see me. And in my office, if I want to make sure they knew I was the mayor, I would sit behind my desk. Otherwise, as friends, I'd sit out in the, in the middle of the room. And, and he made a presentation. I asked a question. And he turned to my city manager and answered my city manager which is a little disconcerting. So I asked another question and, and he did the same thing. He didn't, he didn't speak to me, he spoke to my city manager. I remember this and I know he will too. Uh, I said to my city manager, I said, would you change place with me please? And he said, Mayor, is there something wrong with your chair? And I said, no. So he sat behind the desk and I sat in his chair and I said, now maybe you can talk to me. Uh, sometimes you, you have to do that. Uh, if you do it all the time, then you, you get nowhere. But in that situation, I want to make sure that uh, that the decision would be made the right way and he recognized uh, who I was. How do you think that women who struggled to get the 19th Amendment passed and ratified would evaluate the role of women in politics today? I think they'd be proud. There aren't enough of us, for instance, in, in Congress now uh, Republican women, there are only 12 in the House of Representatives are Republican, nearly 100 Democrats. But that means there are a lot of women and I, they're used to seeing more and more women. So I think they would be proud. There's always room for growth. There's always room for improvement. Um, but I know that the women that are, that are in Congress uh, do an excellent job and there are gonna be some more because there are some more women that I'm supporting to run that haven't been to Congress. You bring up a good point about the, the number of women in Congress. Do y'all have a network? Do you meet together? You know, we, we know for years there's been a good old boys network. Is there a good old girls ne network in Congress? There is. It's not as, um, not as fully blown, as I say, as the, old, the men's uh, group. But we do help each other uh, across the aisle, too. Nita Lowy, Democrat from uh, New York, and I, uh, worked together the first time when I chaired a, a subcommittee and she was the ranking member. The next time it was she was the chair and I was ranking member, but we became fast friends. And when that happens, then you work together. And I believe when you do that and you work together, you have better laws. Oh, you're speaking to a League of Women Voters heart. We like that going across the aisle. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for that. Yeah. When will we have a female president? I, I think we're, we're getting very close. I, I know it will be uh, in my lifetime um, because I'm going to make sure that happens. I just think it's that important. I think it's just a matter of time, Democrat, Republican, I don't know, but I certainly know that we can do the job as women and I hope I get to see that. Ooh, I like your in my lifetime. Um, okay, after you were elected and you can, you can choose as mayor on the city council, as congresswoman, whatever, what do you consider your singular proudest achievement? As mayor, it was making the city safe again. As I said, when we lost all those jobs and that unemployment was so high, when unemployment goes high, so crime goes high. And uh, we had, one neighborhood had the second highest violent crime in the nation. So we put together a program to um, add police officers, specially trained community police officers. And then we worked in the, in the areas that had the most crime and said, we're all in this together. Our crime decreases over 50%, the highest in the nation. We won the All America City based on that. When we did that, I was supposed to make a presentation. I took the people that helped me the most uh, that, and not the elected people or appointed people, but just neighborhood people that made the difference, then I'm very proud of that. In Congress, I'm proud of my work in defense. Um, coming from a, a community that has Lockheed Martin and Bell Helicopter and a, and a, a base and all those subcontractors, defense is extremely important. And I made that very clear when I came uh, to Congress. Newt Gingrich is the one he said, you know, now you've been elected, uh, what, what platform are you gonna take? And he said, childcare is important, education is very important. You were a teacher and I said, both of them are there. I'm here 
to make sure that our, our soldiers, sailors, Marines, all have the best equipment and the best support in the world. And so I got to, as a, a freshman, be put on defense. And that was really a, a, a huge honor. And I took it very seriously. I ended up chairing the first one to ever chair defense appropriations. But it's just, if, if we're not safe, we've, we've missed everything. Companies won't come, they won't grow, and we won't have the respect in the world. So that's what I've been most proud of, to make sure that the funding was there to make sure they had their training, their equipment, uh, and know that the American people supported them. You've mentioned listening as something you've learned and advice you would give. What was the best advice you got about being an elected official? I don't know the best advice, but I'm gonna tell you some advice that, that I'll never forget. When I was mayor, I had the first town hall meeting in 40 years that we'd had. And I said, to get out of the situation we're in at that time, it takes the whole community. So I call for a town hall meeting. It had to be in the convention center, we had so many people. And before that, I had a reception for the governor. The governor was Ann Richards at that time. And so she came there and had all the top business people for this reception. She grabbed me by the arm, dragged me on the stage and said, look at that audience, what do you see? And I see a lot of people that are interested. And she said, and how many of them are in navy blue suits? And I said, almost all the men. She said, then why are you wearing a navy blue suit? Don't ever wear that again. This is a funny story because I'd spent more with that suit than I'd ever spent for any item of clothing in my life. But what <laughs> she was saying is, don't get elected and then say, I want to be one of the guys. That's, that was not the deal. And so, um, and if you remember, she wore bright red or bright yellow or orange. She said also another secret, the cameras will all, always go to you when you have those colors. So that's interesting advice, probably not you expected, but I remember it very well. Oh, I love that advice. Sometimes it's that little stuff that really makes the most difference, isn't it? That's exactly right. Is there any last thing you would like to either go back and emphasize over something that you've already said or summarize in some way? Or is there something new you'd like to talk with us about being a female elected official? I think one of the most important things after you're elected to never forget who elected you. And I, my staff knows that my constituents, the people that elected me, that, that's my, who I owe the most and c c care about every day and they have to too. Uh, and so I think it's really important um, that, we, that we remember that and we seek that out and we stay close. And remember, you're just you're just a person like everyone else. You just got a, a great opportunity to help your community, and, and with my case, help other women. Well, thank you so much. You've given us so much to think about, and we really do appreciate your participating in this today. Thank you very much for asking me. Thank you. Thank you for watching, and the league thanks the many donors who support its mission of empowering voters and defending democracy.